What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Moving on to the next concept in the rate of change chapter. We're now going to be verifying maximum and minimum values on a function. And so far in the chapter, we've gone over different methods to find the instantaneous rate of change at certain points on a function. So for example, if we have this graph here and we want to find the instantaneous rate of change at this point, what do we do? Well, we have to find the slope of that tangent if we draw a tangent on the function at that point. Or if we want it at this point, draw a tangent there, find its slope. Or here, again, draw a tangent, find its slope, and now you're finding the instantaneous rate of change at specific points. And we have different methods for which we can do that. So now what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look for local max and min points. So on this graph, that would be this point, that's a local maximum, and this point here, local minimum. So we're going to be taking points like that on a function and verifying that they are maximum or minimum values. So how would we go about doing that? Well, let's start off by drawing a tangent at those points. So if we draw a tangent at this max point, notice how it's going to be a horizontal line. Same thing here at the min point. If we draw a tangent at this min point, a horizontal line. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the slope of the tangent, the slope of a horizontal line is equal to zero. And showing that the instantaneous rate of change is zero at a point can be part of a series of steps. So to verify a max or min occurs on a function f of x at an x value of a, the first step is that we can show that the instantaneous rate of change or the slope of the tangent at that x value of a on f of x is zero, right? So a maximum or minimum value is always going to have an instantaneous rate of change equal to zero. And how you show the instantaneous rate of change is equal to zero, well, we went over a bunch of methods. You can use the following interval method, preceding interval method, the centered interval method. You can also use the difference quotient. So a bunch of different options to show that that instantaneous rate of change is zero. But notice after this first step, we're only going to know that the point that we're dealing with is a max or a min, but we're not going to know which one it is yet. So that's what we're going to take care of in step two. So step one tells us a point is, okay, it's a max or a min. We don't know which one yet. And then step two is going to tell us, okay, this is a minimum point or this is a maximum point. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's get a little bit more specific with this graph. So let's say that this maximum point here is happening at a point 2 and 25. Okay, so this x value is 2, and then this y value here is 25 for this maximum point. How can we verify that this is a maximum point? Well, what we can do is we can maybe pick a point that's very close to 2 on both the right side and the left side. So let's say maybe 2.1 on the right side and then 1.9 on the left side. And what are the y values of those points going to be? Well, if it's a maximum point, notice how those y values have to be less than this 25 here. So let's say that this y value is 25. Let's say that these points have a y value of 24. Well, if the y value of the two points is less than the y value of the point that we are working with, then we know we are dealing with a maximum, right? Because all of the points that are closest to it, to both the left and right side, the y values are going to be smaller. So let's summarize that observation in a general sense. So I wrote out here, if f of a is greater than f of a plus h, and f of a is greater than f of a minus h, meaning that this f of a here is the same as this f of 2, right? The y value at this x value of a, at this x value of 2. If it's greater than f of a plus h, 
right? So the point plus an h value that's very small, I should probably write that too. So you might want to write h is a small value there. So a small value like 0.1, right? So a2 plus 0.1 would give you 2.1 in this bracket. So f of 2.1 we know is 24. So if f of 2 is greater than f of 2.1, and if f of a is greater than the y value on the function for a point that's to the left of the point a that we are working with, so like this 1.9, then we know a max occurs at x is equal to a. So we basically took this observation and summarized it generally here. Now what about to show that a point is a minimum? What would we do? Well, very similar to this process, let's say that this minimum point here is occurring at an x value of, I don't know, 6. Right, and then the y value of that minimum point is going to be 10. So this point here is going to have a coordinate at 6 and 10. So what we can do is what we did here, is we can test the y values of this function to both the left and the right of this point. So we can pick maybe an x value, let's say, of 6.1, right? So an x value that's very close to 6 to the right, and then an x value that's very close to 6 to the left, so let's say 5.9. And for this to be a minimum point, notice how these y values are going to have to be higher than the y value at that point that we are working with. So let's say these y values are going to be at 11. So if the y values of points that are very close to both the left and the right of the point that we are working with are greater than the y value at that point, then we know a minimum is occurring. So taking that observation and then generalizing it, so another case for the second step, if f of a is less than f of a plus h, and f of a is less than f of a minus h, where h is very small, then we know a minimum is occurring at x is equal to a. So taking this and relating it back to this scenario, this f of a here is basically f of 6, and we know f of 6 is 10. The y value at an x value of 6 is 10. So if that y value is less than the y value of the function to points that are to the right, so f of a plus h, so like this f of 6.1 is 11, right? And then f of a minus h, a point to the left of it, so like this 5.9, f of 5.9 we found out here is 11 as well. So notice how f of a, f of 6, is less than f of 6.1 and it's less than f of 5.9, we know a minimum is occurring there. So you can always follow these steps whenever you're asked to verify a max or min on a function at an x value of a. First step, you have to find, you have to show that the instantaneous rate of change or the slope of the tangent at that x value of a on the function is zero. So we know then that a max or a min is occurring. We don't know which one yet. And then in step two, depending on which scenario happens with the y values of the function that are very close to that point, we'll then know whether it's a max or a min. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.